The Stateside Soccer Show is now covering Ted Lasso. If that's a joke, I love it. If not, I cannot wait to unpack that with you. That's no joke. The Stateside Soccer Show now presents Believe Cast. We aren't talking about faith or ghosts. Do you believe in ghosts, Ted? I do. But more importantly, I think they need to believe in themselves. We are talking Ted Lasso episode recaps. So sit back, get ready for us to discuss all the tea. You know, I always figured that tea was just going to taste like hot brown water. And you know what? I was right. Yeah, it's horrible. Hello and welcome to Believe Cast, presented by the Stateside Soccer Show. My name is Jordan Wiegand, and with me today is a man who I think just tripped over his uh, computer there after just coming back from injury. It's Logan Stump. Yeah, the spirits of the podcast gods got me just now. <laughs> I, I do this all the time. So like those that are watching live, the reason why you probably can hear me through, I think you could probably hear me through like the intro now. Because you can't. Did, you can't. Yeah. Oh, you can't? Okay. Because it like says I'm muted, but I was like, I don't know if no. you can hear me. But okay, I was laughing the whole time because I always exit out of StreamYard, which we record with. Like I always hit the wrong. You know what I need to start doing is pinning it because I can pin it to my tab where it won't close at all on a Mac. So like I can pin that. I need to start doing that. But yeah, Jordan, I'm back. How's it going? How you doing? I'm I'm fine after I've just I don't know what I did. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm doing well, I guess. Right. Uh, we record these so far in advance. Um, if we talked about how things are going, you, you, you would probably, I don't know, be confused, uh, by the time these come out, like, actually it's only, it's 2020 right now, Logan, isn't that crazy? Yeah. Jordan, how, how's the first episode? How's the first episode of Mandalorian? I know we, we were just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah, we're recording this in 2019 before Ted Lasso even came out. That's how far <laughs> in advance we are, right. uh, but we're talking episode six, two aces, which was written by Bill Rubel and directed by Elliot, uh, Haggerty, Haggerty. The synopsis, when Jamie refuses to train, Ted turns to talented new signing Danny Rojas, and the team is struck by an age-old curse. Logan, we teased it last episode, but this is the big introduction to a famous character coming in to the show, Danny Rojas, uh, Football is Life. Uh, something that I heard so many people say before I start watching the show, and then uh, I'd seen Danny Rojas on, like, on something before I watched the show. And uh, I was kind of like, Oh, I wonder when that guy's coming in. And then here we are more than halfway into the season. And Danny Rojas is here. Your thoughts on this episode to aces. Yeah. I, I think I'll mention something. I guess it's like jumping kind of ahead, but uh, they mentioned that he comes from the transfer window in the summer and they don't mention him at all. Like, not at all. I guess when a coach comes in like this halfway through the season, it wouldn't really be a topic of point until the guy was healthy and coming back, I guess, on the men. But it was just so I, I didn't. That's the only continuity thing I've ever struggled with was the fact that he just put. Um, no, I, I really do enjoy this episode. I love Danny. I know a lot of people love Danny just because he's like Ted 2.0. Um, he's a happy go lucky kind of guy. I, I love the actor so much. Um, you'll see oftentimes people uh, will take pictures with him and it's always like, like I know he was a big person. Like he, uh, Brett Goldstein, um, the guy that plays Jamie, um, they are all like really important figures. And I remember there were always pictures of Danny and I wasn't that far into Ted Lasso yet. And I was like, who is this guy? Um, I'm very confused, but uh, no, I'm glad that we get our first introduction here. And I can't believe it's this far into the season. I always thought it was earlier than this, but for some reason it just kind of, blows my mind that we we have to wait this long to get to know danny yeah i forget every time too like when i'm showing my wife this and i'm like wow she hasn't even seen danny rojas yet <laughs> and football is life i mean people were saying that all during season one and it was because uh it's it, it's so prevalent in the show and in this episode but you know uh oh yeah also by the way this was september 4th of 2020 I keep forgetting to add the dates in there now on on Apple TV Plus, but 
uh, Cristo Fernandez playing Danny Rojas, and then a year later shows up in the end credit scene of Spider-Man No Way Home with uh, Tom Hardy as Venom. He's the bartender, Cristo Fernandez. So, yeah, the first Ted Lasso character to appear in the MCU before Brett Goldstein shows up in another end credit scene during Thor Love and Thunder. So they're taking over the world, Logan. They are taking over the MCU. They're Muppets. taking over the Muppets, uh, Sesame <laughs> Street, all that stuff. That's right. <laughs> like, Sesame Street, wrong one. Sesame Street. But they're, they are Muppets. Uh, yeah, they are. isn't Brett and Muppets now? In no. The- but, I mean, they are technically Muppets made by Jim Henson. Uh, then he, they're, they're split rights though. That's why Disney doesn't own Sesame Street. Fun, some fun stuff there. Uh, that's why Big Bird appears in the Muppet movie. FYI. Okay, <laughs> let's get back to Ted Lasso. So Ted comes into work flustered, right? We kind of see him in the beginning. He's taken off his wedding ring for the first time, right? Since, since he, uh, since the end of the last episode where Michelle and him are agreeing to a divorce. He's coming in all flustered. You can tell he's bothered by something. He's talking about how he wants to bury himself in work, but he doesn't like the term bury, right? So it's uh, bathe. He's going to bathe, bathe himself in work. He's asking Nate and Beard what types of uh, baths they like. Nate doesn't like baths. Coach says he likes honey baths. And uh, with the honey baths, uh Ted makes him, uh, Ted asks if he's calling him honey, right? And this is a a funny part here where Ted says, I think we should give each other all cute little nicknames like that. And he, you know, calls Nate sweetie at one point. (laughs) This this will come back around later too. But I just really like this opening and seeing Ted kind of flustered and still trying to be his positive, happy self. But you can just tell it's a little maybe inauthentic here at this part. Yeah, it starts off with the somber music and him taking off the ring, and you can just tell he's distraught. And then uh, they always make the choice with Ted. Um, whenever Ted's not happy, the hair is always like more droopy and down, um, and he's all disheveled when he comes in to put his little sweater on that he wears. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I love this part. I love when he when and he asks Nate, he goes, "Do you take any bath, Nate?" And he's like, "No, I don't like to take baths because I get uh, I get all wrinkly, and I'm afraid of aging." To be honest with you. Um, and then after that, Ted goes, uh, as he's leaving, he calls beard honey. And then when he's leaving, calls, uh, Nate sweetie. And I think at, right after that is when, uh, when Nate turns to goes, is Ted all right? And beard goes, <laughs> no, <laughs> like, no, he's not all right. Um, so this is that first kind of, it's that first time that you really see Ted just like absolutely just distraught and negative and kind of angry as we'll see in this episode. So. Uh, no, I, I really do enjoy the scene, and we're building up to a, a more important foundational piece of this office and kind of the the, the, the coach's room, the manager's room. So yes, uh, yeah. So we go to the credits here, and then they come back. It's the press conference. Trent Krim from the Independent, right? He's going to ask Ted about Jamie starting. Is it possible Jamie's going to start back? Ted says it's up to Jamie, right? And right after this press conference, we're going to go into Rebecca talking to Ted about how Manchester City are talking, right? And if if Jamie's not going to start or play, that they might, you know, take back their loan, right? And you get Ted's line of they're going to take his house. And we kind of get the explanation about the loan system here, which is something we covered a few episodes ago when we hear Arlo White say that... um, that Jamie is a loanee from Manchester city. But again, just to kind of reiterate it's Manchester city, like Rebecca says, owns the contract, but they loan him to Richmond for more playing time while they're waiting for Jamie to develop a little bit more. And then probably in a year or two, bring him into the fold or sell him for some sort of uh, money. This is something that happens in world football. A lot is teams like Chelsea or city, will buy younger players, loan them out, and then eventually sell them for a profit because they'll get better, but they're maybe still not good enough to make it into those big sides. Though really, the way Chelsea's buying right now, 
anybody can make it into that team, I guess. If uh, not <laughs> anybody, are... Jordan, everybody's making it. <laughs> everybody, <laughs> yeah. yeah, everybody that they buy. It's like we gotta try to get something working here. We're gonna I was gonna say in. that is that is a way. If you're getting around financial fair play, which oftentimes those big clubs do, then uh, to hell, uh, just buy everybody. But yeah, the. I, I like this part just because Man City is my team that I support. And it's just, it sounds funny because I just imagine Rebecca calling like Tiki or like maybe Pep and going, hey, yeah. there, Pep's calling like, you got to play him. What are you doing? Yeah. Pep's like, uh, Jamie Tart? Like, what's going on here? <laughs> I know we just signed Holland, but we'd like Jamie Tart to play some. So we get into, uh, also, this is where we get. Uh, Ted talking about the plan, how the plan is, you know, it's not his plan to bench Jamie. It's up to Jamie, you know, coming together as part of the team. But what we get with this, right, is Ted saying plan too many times that it loses all meaning. We get him saying plan, plan. And then he say, he tries the Rebecca accent, right? He's like, plan, plan. And she says, plan. <laughs> but yeah then she says flan right and he's like like the dessert (laughs) just ted not liking british food and drinks is uh one of the best parts of of his personality (laughs) if the british are listening to this you can close your ears right now but i I mean i'm not he's got a point like there's a lot of british food just not very good (laughs) Uh, it's just i don't know it's just not my favorite cuisine yeah yeah i mean even their burgers taste different man yeah, it, it's it's almost like uh, they're because they're gonna make fun of us because like oh well you guys salt everything and throw mm-hmm. like acid all over it but I'm like it's so bland. but it makes it taste better <laughs> yeah it's bland <laughs> I don't know their tea like tea time like biscuits and scones and like jams and stuff are great but anything that like you want to taste American does not taste American it's like oh that's kind well of what I what I learned when I went over there is that they actually use you know different cows obviously than we do but Irish cows uh, taste different I guess because they aren't probably injecting them with tons of hormones no. <laughs> but it doesn't Just taste as good i yeah. will say uh with their burgers but pizza tastes the same I'll tell you that much kfc but does too mcdonald's tastes the same too i'll, I'll give it i'll give it that yeah. much all right uh th- so they go into the coach's office now and jamie uh tells Be- had jamie had told beard that he's not going to practice because he's hurt so i ask you is this because Jamie heard the press conference or was this Jamie's plan because of getting benched last game? What's, what's your thoughts here? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, yeah, I think it has more to do with like the press conference, maybe like, I, I think he is angry at Ted, but I, I, I think if Ted, you know, says, you know, J, J, it was just a one-off thing and Jamie's learned his lesson. Then I think you get a player that goes in and goes, I'll show you and I'll play. I'll practice, watch this. But I think because he then hears the press conference and he wants Jamie to change, Jamie does not want to change. So I think it was more attack on Jamie's character, um, which, you know, I guess is warranted at this case. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing, because they they show Jamie, like, in the back of the press room for whatever reason. (laughs) I don't know why he just decided, I got to see what Ted's going to say about this. But, yeah, he decides to go in there and look. And he, you know, we hear the Trent Krim question, and then he kind of like is all like, like pissed off and, and leaves. Uh, so Ted almost loses his cool here, or I guess he gets say he does lose his cool, right? So, you know, we're at the almost Ted's breaking point, get there at another point, I think, later on in the show, but he's just going through this divorce and he's having to deal with this petulant child. That is Jamie, right? And Jamie says he can't play or practice because he's hurt. And, you know, what really sets him off is when he says, relax, Ted, it's just practice. And Ted goes on this long rant about practice and how he can't practice because he's hurt. But uh, ultimately, he's going to tell Jamie if he can't practice, then he's going to set up the cones like the other reserves do. And we kind of see how far Jamie has fallen from grace here because he's going to tell Colin, go set up the cones. And Colin's like, you're the second teamer, dude, right? And at first, Isaac McAdoo steps up and says something. He's like, I wasn't talking to you, Isaac. And then Colin stands up for himself here. 
And this is kind of like a huge 180 from the first few episodes. Yeah, I, I like the when when Ted does confront Jamie because it's the Allen Iverson bet, but practice, man. You talk about practice. It's, it's the game we're talking. And you can tell that the you can tell that the players are trying to keep their cool. And you can see Brett Goldstein in the back, Roy. And Roy's just kind of like you can tell they're trying to keep their their crap together because I'm pretty sure they probably have then seen the scene of uh Allen Iverson before the press conference who plays for the Sixers or plays. Yeah, he still plays. Uh play he still plays. The, yeah, he's all the process. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, uh played for the 76ers, which is an NBA team over here and, and there's this whole bit where alan iverson's like they asked him about practice and he goes I, i'm not talking about the game i'm talk, talking about practice man i don't want to practice like alan iverson was a big proponent of being lazy um but <laughs> this is a great scene uh i do like the whole second bit. and then uh, i love when roy's sitting there with jamie at the end after he gets told off that he's the second team near the stuff that comes and roy goes he goes oh that had to burn uh, or sting cheers <laughs> he right. walks off like see you later and this is when we get talk about the new guy, Danny Rojas. You know, he got, like you said, came in the summer transfer window and immediately got hurt. And um, Ted is just hoping that he's good. So it kind of lights a fire under Jamie here. And we cut to practice. And this is the first time we see Danny practice. He comes out there. He's full of energy, full of life. Football is life. Jamie can't stand it. Roy gets in another dig here, right? When when Danny scores a great like, not bicycle, but like uh, sideways kick, right, into the goal, and he's like, "Oh, he's very good." And Logan, how much of a difference do you think this makes for Richmond having Danny, who is super positive, help this locker room, who is starting to unite, but they still have one guy named Jamie Tart kind of tearing him down a bit. How, how big of a difference with his good vibes and football his life mentality? Yeah, I think it, it's like the attitude, right? Um, like it, positive positive interaction and positive uh, play is going to, or in an attitude is going to result in positive play. And I think you get the same kind of goal production that you're going to get with Jamie and you don't have the bad attitude. So I think that's where, like, I think Jamie does have special abilities to create and do different things. He could be a special, a more special player. But, like, this this is what happens when I kind of compare it to, like, a situation where you have two really good players and they're kind of blocking each other from getting playing time equally um, because it's like, you know, you want to give uh, this person a chance to score. It's kind of like the Man City thing with Holland and Julian Alvarez where you've got two great players that are kind of different in style and want to play and, and can play and be a star at this level. So I think it's a huge thing too. And I think it really does kind of like reflect how Ted wants this team to be is this positive, energetic run around hustle. And that's what Danny wants. And once that player becomes a prominent role in your team, it's infectious. And you and I, you know, covering soccer know that like it, the, the attitude is so infectious and the scoring and the goal scoring. I thought you were going to so. say like you and I, like, We've been in locker rooms like that. I was going to be like, no, yeah. I have not. I've We've been in a lot of played. locker rooms. I have not played at this level. I don't know what you're about to say here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but we cut to uh, a very fun part here where we go to Rebecca's office and Higgins names drop some people here. says that available managers have been asking about the potential opening. And he mentions Tony Pulis and Harry Redknapp. He also said another name that I couldn't catch. Um, I rewound and listened to it and couldn't catch it. it was Alan somebody, but I couldn't uh, couldn't pick it up. And then after listening to it twice, I was like, I'm not going back and <laughs> digging even more into this. But uh, Keely comes in, and this is where she breaks the news that Bex is now known as Rebecca, and Rebecca is now known as Old Rebecca to the press. So we 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 have a few of our characters just going through some stuff. Logan is. Rebecca is now having to deal with the media calling her old Rebecca. I love this part too, because Higgins is standing in there when he's talking about the managers and stuff like that. And Keeley comes in, Keeley just busts through the door as they're having this serious conversation about coaches being interested in the, the job if Ted fails. Um, and then <laughs> Keeley tells Rebecca to F off. 
And Higgins turns and goes, well, Rebecca, if I told you to F off, I feel like the reaction would have been a lot different. <laughs> and they kind of awkwardly laugh. And then she goes, Higgins, get out. Like, yeah. Yeah, get the hell out of my office. Like, yeah. Kind of like the, the reaction would have been if he would have told her to F off. Uh, Higgins would have been packing his stuff up, I think, from his office. Had he told Rebecca, at least, you know, now in this current situation, that he would puke. But I love Keely so much. She just, like, gets to Rebecca in a way that, None of the characters have so far. So, yes. Uh, so now we go back to the practice field, and you know, Jamie is just kind of kicking around after it seems like practice is over, right? And he hits the crossbar, and Danny comes over and asks if it was uh, on purpose. Do you think it was? No, I don't, I don't think, think so. so. Either. No, no, I think he's trying to hit the goal because the way he reacted to Danny saying, Wow, nice job. That was impressive. He kind of like, You jerk. Yeah, but what they decide to do here is play the crossbar challenge. You know, this was kind of going around for a bit a couple years ago. Uh, my dad and I played this too, and uh, I don't remember who won, but probably him. He's better than me. But it's fun. You know, usually it's it's fun to like in the sense of <laughs> sometimes you're scoring a goal and you're like, darn it, like that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to hit the crossbar. It's like total opposite. But, you know, it's like a precision thing of – I can control it so well, I'm going to hit the crossbar. And that's what they, you know, they start doing crossbar challenge or I'm going to hit this post, I'm going to hit that post. It's really cool. Uh, it's a fun game to play if you, if you ever want to. But we cut to Ted and Coach Beard who are watching from the stands, you know, and Ted says here that he feels like they hit the lucky tree and hit every branch on the way down. And now they have two aces because Danny is so good and because they have Jamie too. And uh, this is when now Ted and Coach Beard hear the word Aces too many times that it's lost on meeting. And you even get Ted saying, <laughs> Ted saying Isis and Coach Beard being like, well, that's not like Isis. He's like, well, yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. <laughs> Just some fun, some fun moments here with Coach Beard and, and him saying Aces. It's really weird too, because it's like, these are things that I've done, like that you don't really think other people do. But I've said words where I'm going, is that a is that a word? Why does that sound weird? Why does that sound like it's not a word? And I've done that so many times. Um, and it, you just say it enough to where it's like, nope, that doesn't sound right. I must not be saying it right. Or I don't know what it means anymore because it just sounds I, I don't. I don't get that one as much. Like I've done it before, obviously, but not with like simple words, I feel like. But... What gets me is like when I write a word in all capitals and then it doesn't look right. Or sometimes I just spell a word and I'm like, that doesn't look like I spelled that right. And I have to Google it. And I'm like, oh, no, I did spell that right. Yep. It doesn't look right. You know, <laughs> I've had that before. Uh, but we cut to Keely and Roy who are walking on the treadmills and we kind of get some background on Roy and his part of it. But Keely is, you know, picking up from last episode, she's trying to uh find like brand partnerships for other people so she's looking into all their histories and she's also trying to build this relationship with roy it seems like as we're getting more and more keely and roy in each episode yeah um it's it is funny just because the i love that he reads now it's almost like ted has kind of sp sp like spurred him into like going on just reading anything that he can but i, I yeah it's a. Uh, it's a good little moment. I, I, you know, what's interesting. I never really caught this uh, the first time, first couple times now that I've watched Ted Lasso um, is the fact that he, it, it's a conversation about uh, like a bio and she's going around and collecting player bios because she's going to, you know, she's the public relations person. She, she wants to tell people uh, the, the player's story, uh, probably put it on the website and things like that, or like make, you know, videos and stuff to, that kind of cover the player and where they come from. And she tries to get to know, Roy and the first thing that she says she's like uh, you know as a young kid who was you know played in Sunderland uh, basically has been a Sunderland player since you can remember um, and it, it alludes to a bigger moment that happens later in the episode but it's the first time I ever caught it that she's going around and collecting people's bios because it's really important we cut to we we cut to the practice field again and Danny just trips over nothing and hurts himself and is injured again. I want to point out 
it was typical Danny Rojas, right? This is kind of what they mentioned. He he gets injured a lot, right? And I was playing my FIFA Richmond career, <laughs> and I have had Danny Rojas injured two or three times already. <laughs> so it is, and for long periods of time, that it's like FIFA must know. They're like name is Danny Rojas, injure him all the time. Like I turned down injury sliders. He still gets injured. I don't know what's going on, but maybe he went into the training room, uh, the uh, or as they call it, the treatment room. But uh, we learned that he went into the treatment room before he went out in practice, and everybody is acting like this is some big revelation, and Ted's like, hey, but stop talking, uh, like, you know, first, because me and Coach Beard don't understand what you're saying, and start explaining this to us. And they mention it's haunted. Now, Roy says he doesn't believe in ghosts, but he you know, they still ask him if he wants to go in there with him. He's like, no, like I'm not going in there. But let's take you back to 2020, Logan, when this show premiered. You and I and our friend Matt had a podcast called Quarantine and Chill during the quarantine period. We had a whole episode about do you believe in ghosts? So let's reiterate our stances here for people that didn't listen. Do you believe in ghosts, Logan? I do. Um, I'm not a very spiritual person, but I do believe that there is uh, there are ghosts just because like I, there's, you know, people that I've trust that have said they've like had experiences and, and like paranormal things that have happened to them. And I'm like, I don't know what else would explain that besides that. Um, you know, I've never actually had a personal experience, but like, I don't know, they, there's a lot of signs that point to um, at least my belief in it. And I, and I know I think you and I are differing on this um, because I think your stance is a little different. But yeah, I, I, I do. Um, I do believe that ghosts can do this. I don't believe the ghost trip, Danny. I think Danny just is clumsy, um, <laughs> as you'll soon find out. But yeah, I, I do believe in ghosts, Jordan. I do not. Yeah. yeah. I, let me reiterate my stance from 2020. That has not changed. Nothing in these three years has changed my stance that... Do that. If you want to hear a spirited debate on this, everyone, you can go back to spirited quarantine debate. and chill. <laughs> yeah. Quarantine and chill. Just Google it. You might be able to find it still. I never took it down, so it's still there. But we had a few fun episodes like that. And, uh, you know, believing in aliens, all that kind of stuff. I do not believe in ghosts. And I feel like there'd be a lot more evidence that ghosts are real, right? Like, I feel like anybody that says it, it's like usually an anecdotal thing, but like they've never been able to say, Hey, look, this is an actual thing of the ghost. Right. And all those ghost hunter shows, my wife's watches, they're all BS. You know, I mean, there's no way you can make hundreds of episodes of this, of these shows with, with that. And uh, I've heard behind the scenes stuff about how they're fake too. So I don't believe in ghosts, but uh, so. Did you and I would have can you believe that shit? <laughs> <laughs> I would have went into the treatment room if I was Roy, though. I would have, uh, just because I'm not superstitious. I'm not anything like that, you know? So not even a little stitious, I would say. But uh, they all go to the pub, and they're planning their curse reverse here and we learned some background on the Richmond trading room and why they think it's haunted Logan. It's because they the team put posters up, or not really the team, I guess, but somebody put posters up for open tryouts for the team, but it was actually a trick to enlist them into the military for World War, I think one or two. And uh guess where they had their physicals? And I like when Nate says, oh Christ, it was our treatment room. And Ted's like, no, 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 no. Yes, it was, but I want you guys to chill out a little bit. This is like what you do as a teacher. Like I, I've taught before and, and, and like it's like 100% like, no, guys, it's not true. Whatever you think, nothing bad. I mean, it is true, but like I don't need you guys panicking and freaking out about this thing coming down the line that we're going to have to tackle eventually. So... Yeah, no, this is a great moment. I just and Jordan, I, the scene before this, like like you're talking about, it's like this core group of people now. It's Higgins, it's Ted, it's Nate, it's Sam, it's Roy. Like those are like the main five now that we're really getting to see. And then now they're starting to kind of branch in the side characters like Colin and like Isaac to kind of 
get into this mix and it's just it's starting to get better and better we get a new character too i forget the guy's name it's the i think the spanish player um I forget the guy's name though um i meant to write it down because they do say it in this episode and he has a couple parts now in this episode too and he's pretty funny but i just like the team dynamic because they can just bring in you know there's 28 29 guys staff that they could just bring in yeah and we even have the the pub people in this you know we have may and we have the the three but uh pub people one of them's named Baz. I know that. I don't remember the other two names. They say the other guy's name too. Uh, but you know, that's how we learn that they're yeah. all in the pub at first. The one guy's like, "What are you guys like staring at?" And he's like, "The whole Richmond team is here." <laughs> <laughs> I love May. She's great. Yes, yes, she's been great too. And you know, she's she's kind of taking up a bit of the role here too at times. You know, explaining some of the past and all that fun stuff. Uh, I think the player you're talking about for that that we kind of get here is uh, Richard Mon- Montlore. He's a French midfielder. Is he French? Yeah. What do they call? They call him something though. I think I forget what they call him. I think they called him Richie or something, but something I don't like know. That. Yeah, I thought he was Spanish. My fault. All the French people. <laughs> because I'm looking for the another name and I don't see it. Uh, I think you're right. Uh, I think it is Richie. I, I think, think it is. Him. And and uh, yeah, he he's that's Montelor, uh, French player. He's pretty good in FIFA. I'll, I'll say that much. But <laughs> I like when Colin goes, "Wait, so there's 400 ghosts in the treatment room that we have to fight?" And they're like, "No, we don't have to fight them. What are you doing? What are you talking <laughs> yeah. about?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. What they're gonna do is they're gonna do this. Um, curse reverse where they're all going to bring an item to the treatment room and they're going to throw it in there an item that means something to them and uh we have we have jamie and keely talking then where you know keely is going to mention to jamie that he he has to stop battling the people that are trying to help him talking about ted uh she can see that ted's trying to help he thinks ted's just like i don't know on his ass i guess um, about stuff but you know jamie's starting to understand a bit he says he's not going to go to the the thing to throw the stuff in but we'll see that he does show up we get a fun moment here of sam and rebecca having a conversation she, sam is going to ask rebecca if she's free tonight and he, she kind of misinterpret interprets this and tries to let him down easy and Sam's like, oh, no, I can understand why you'd think that because you're so beautiful. But, you know, we want the whole team there, so we want you to come too. But I love this moment when he says, whenever curses come up, they're always like, oh, I bet the African is really into this stuff. You know, like very like profiling, right? And she's like, oh, you're not? And he's like, oh, no, I am. <laughs> <laughs> but not because of that, but because of what? He likes Harry Potter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a good one. It does a place to this awful stereotypes that exist. But he's yes. like, well, yeah, I guess you can see they're kind of true. We do have, uh, we're very connected to our spiritual, uh, like the afterlife and stuff. But yeah, I, I love Sam so much. And she she agrees for Sam that she will go. Here's the interesting one, though. I'm sorry to cut you off before you get in. Um, I like the part where he says. And this is about J.K. Rowling, as divisive as she has been. Um, but uh, I love the part where he goes, and this speaks to Sam, but it also is a shot directly into Rebecca, where he says, hey, did you know that J.K. Rowling actually has more money than the Queen? And he goes, you know what I've always enjoyed is that when uh, people become rich for what they give to the world and not people that just have money because their family does. And it was like, I think it in and it pans to Rebecca and she has this moment of like, holy crap, that was a that was a shot because I have money because of my ex husband. Like I still have a ton of money, am going to have a ton of money because I'm going to take all my husbands because that's the way it was going to work with the, with the divorce settlement. So I, I love that part. I think it's a great part by Sam and he's used to that in Africa where, you know, the princes and everybody else they have money. The people in charge in Africa have money because the family has it and nobody else does. Yes, a lot of people would say she shouldn't have that money now. 
yeah. like you said, as divisive as she's been lately. Yeah, no. Uh, take all of her coming money. for her. Yeah. Disney buy it, take it from her. Like, yeah, who knew rallying was so Team Voldemort? But yeah, <laughs> we learn, we're learning right. more and more. It really is where yeah. she falls. But yeah, training room. They all they all go to bring their items. Roy brings an old blanket from when he was nine years old. He tells a story about that. I think this is when Montlore brings the sand where he first slept with a supermodel. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Nate, yeah, they're kind of like, dude, Smile not... that it happened, right? <laughs> is what they tell him. Um, Nate brings sunglasses because someone told him he looked like Clive Owen in them. Rebecca throws in today's paper and says, F the haters. Uh, she explains that there was something in there about her. Obviously that's probably the new, I mean, the Becca, uh, Rebecca and old Rebecca thing that she's burning. Higgins brings his cat's collar. We just learned about this an episode or two ago that his cat was very old and hanging on, but she passed away. So he brings the, the Cindy collar. Clawford. <laughs> yeah. Cindy Clawford. Uh, Isaac McAdoo brings a pen or pencil that he says is the only one he writes his name in or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it like lights up. There's not much depth to Isaac. No, not yet. Uh, Colin oh, Hughes true. brings his keys to his Lambo, which <laughs> how is he going to get home? And Jamie brings in his cleats. He comes in from when he was young. His mom had got it for him and he tells a story about how Jamie's you know how his mom is the one that actually got him into football and had he only wants to make her proud but as soon as he was getting good right his dad started showing up and kind of berating him for when he doesn't reach the level that his dad thinks he can be in and how Jamie usually forgets about try, just trying to make his mom happy and not worrying about his dad so we're getting some depth here from Jamie and uh, they're about to burn it, and they're like, you know what? We should probably take this outside. <laughs> I love Beard's like, whoa, 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 don't, don't. Yeah, take this let's outside? take this outside. He's always the voice of reason, Beard. Yeah. Um, but no, man, we, this is where that bio thing comes in. The two stories that Roy and Jamie tell are, like, phenomenal and really, mm -hmm. you know, lenses into being able to see, like, microscopes into their life. Um, I have a question for you. Do you think that Jamie's mom's dead? Ooh. Because like he says so. something and I could I had to rewind it a couple of times, but I couldn't tell what he was saying after he he says that I like I don't think my mom or like you know I but I, I thought he used like the past tense. I don't think I almost think, like I don't, I don't think, think she'd, she'd be, be happy proud. right now is what he says what kind he of says? Okay. Sometimes I, like I don't think she'd be happy, right? I assume that she was thing. dead. I didn't take it that way. I took it if like if she knew how I was acting, she wouldn't be happy. But that's a good point. We don't know. I don't think we know fully. I, yeah. I think if she was dead, they probably would have made Mentioned it a little it. clearer to give him more sympathy. But maybe that's a season three thing. Uh, and, and then I, I think another thing, I guess, that could have happened is that usually it's oftentimes in divorce if the kid sides with the dad that's an arrogant jerk and reminds too much of the son. And it's kind of like this weird, like, you know, dynamic between the two, I think. And it's like you're a lot like your dad. Um, but yeah, I think the whole story with Jamie and his dad and just like, he goes, I hate when he calls me soft. And I think, mm -hmm. do you think that he feels like that's what Ted does when Ted's like correcting him is not saying directly that you're soft, but kind of like playing to the fact that do you think he's kind of triggered and has kind of that, that same kind of feeling that like Ted is belittling me and like telling me what to do and criticizing me. And that's what my dad does. I don't think so. I, I think no. it's almost like maybe Ted reminds him more of his mom. Okay. Honestly. And and I think it's this push of how embarrassed he probably was getting withdrawn from the match. Yeah. Um, and he's probably thinking too much about how it, his dad would react to that. Right. Um, that is making him resent Ted because he knows he's probably going to get a call from his dad or a visit from his dad saying, you know, look, you're not even good enough. You're, you scored two goals, but your coach still took you out. Um, I, I think it's more of that, but because 
Ted hasn't Ted's been treating him with kid gloves until maybe today, right? When he's telling them about the when he goes on his practice rant, like that's probably the most frustrated we've seen Ted get with Jamie or anyone until later this next scene. But uh yeah, I don't know. I, I think I'd say he probably rem- it probably reminds him more of his mom, and that might be why he's been able to kind of snap back and think about the cleats. Good question. Uh, So they go outside and Higgins tells Ted that the Eagle has landed and Danny Rojas comes out with some alcohol. He's going to throw it in the fire. They tell (laughs) actually ghosts prefer empty bottles as Roy is going to say, but uh, Rebecca says, Ted, I didn't think you were a gambling man. And he says, I'm not. We knew Danny was fine hours ago, and it was actually Higgins' idea to withhold that from the team. And Rebecca takes a little shot at Higgins here, like, oh, putting the team first, are we? And and this is going to piss Rebecca off, um, especially when Jamie starts. Jamie's going to be the one here that starts the Richmond Till We Die chant, pointing that out. Jamie's the one that starts it. She says it's a United team, and she just takes off. She's upset, right? This is foiling her whole plan that she is still enacting. And, uh, yeah, Danny and the team, and they're all bonding. They're chanting. We're going to cut to the next morning. Ted is coming in, and Beard is upset. He's going to tell Ted the news. We still don't know the news at this point, but we're going to cut to Ted breaking into... Uh, Rebecca's office here bursting in saying, you you know, Jamie got sent away. Like I was finally making it through to him. We had two aces and she's like, I thought this is what you wanted. He says, you thought wrong. And he's a little heated. This is probably the most heated we've seen Ted at this point. And she says, you should probably leave before you say something you regret. And he does, but he says, first, here's your biscuits. I hope they're not as good as they usually are, but this is the best batch yet. I finally cracked the recipe. So we've known for a while that he's been making them, but if I'm not wrong, this is the first time Rebecca has heard that he's the one making them, right? Yeah, I noted that in my when she said it. I was like, nope, that's the first time she's mentioned that because I went back and looked. It is the very first time that we we know, uh, but we know a lot about Ted and like what's going on. We know a lot about Rebecca's side as kind of that, um, what is it? What do they call that, Jordan, when you... There's something in television where we all know, but it's like, it's like, is it like dramatic that? irony? Yeah, there we go. Dramatic irony. Yep. Yeah. But isn't it like a, isn't it? It's like the thing called like, it's not like the God complex, but it's kind of like, you know, all you see all and you don't quite understand. Like the characters don't understand. It's like that wall that's built kind of where we almost know like omni- omnipotent. Omni- right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm nipping it. I'm sorry. Um, (laughs) (laughs) uh, But yeah, no, I I love this scene. Um, And Jordan, our friend, Jack, super sod, right? Is that how you say his last name? Yeah. He made those biscuits, man. So he's not the only one, Ted. Um, Yeah, yeah. Maybe it was Jack. I'm going to try making them. He sent me the recipe. So I'm going to have to try it. Yeah, I told Ashley. She's like, we should make it. I was like, totally. For the season three like we're gonna practice obviously but season three we could have them like you're gonna you're gonna have to get the little pink boxes too a hundred percent yep (laughs) yep i think you can actually order them off etsy like oh probably yeah so i can make them on canva (laughs) well ted's very upset he's in his office right danny's gonna come in and say coach football is life he's gonna try to bring the spirit up a little bit here but that is where the episode's going to end with Ted going to grab Jamie's jersey and walking off. So that is the end of episode six of Ted Lasso season one. Let's jump over to our man of the match. Logan, I don't know about you, but I'm giving mine to Danny Rojas for bringing in some new energy to the show, but also to the team here. And, uh, just really changing some dynamics, I think, that really helps uh, the team and the show have an even more uplifting, uh, positive feel to it. So I'm going to go Danny Rojas for my man of the match. 
Uh, can we go co-player? Is that a thing? Or are we just going? Uh, what do you mean? One man. I kind of want to give a co- co-man of the match because I think they've done that a couple times, haven't they? Where they've given two man of the match. Oh, so you're going to give two. Yeah. All right, go ahead. I feel like I want to give two. Uh, and it's mostly because they play off of each other really well in this episode. And I'm going to give it to Roy and Danny. Um, and they set each other up. Like Danny's, Danny's positivity and things really give Roy uh, the ability to kind of uh, come into his own as a character, too. Because Roy's like, he follows up by basically torturing Jamie. Finally, we get like mm-hmm. Jamie being put into his place. And Roy's there to kind of remind Jamie that you are not you, you might be one in a million but you're not one in this 11 anymore like this is not something that that you can get away with now because danny's here to kind of supplant you um and become the team's number one so uh, i love the 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 dynamic and uh they compared danny rojas to the golden retriever and that's one of my favorite lines of the whole episode when he's like he's like the golden retriever and then uh that's when yeah <laughs> raven hair oh, golden yeah. retriever <laughs> Gosh, is it true that uh, America, that oh, they put down dogs uh, in if there's the too shelters many dogs are in the over, shelters, but, yeah, yeah, because the shelters are um, overpopulated. And he goes, "Yeah, unfortunately, that is true." But I will say that there's so- female songwriters and singers that have tried to <laughs> <laughs> try to put a stop to that. In the arms right. of right. so I'm giving co because I thought okay. Danny and Roy had to play together in this episode because Roy's almost like explaining who Danny is and, and what Danny brings. So I don't think it's fully on Danny because I think Danny's just so oblivious that Roy is the one that has to explain how how crucial um, Danny's going to be this project. So. Over to our Richmond employee of the week. I'm going to have to go. No surprises here, I don't think. We're going to have to go with Higgins again because this is Higgins' idea to keep the Danny Rojas is fine from the team to help build this team. He's bought in, Logan, to the Ted Lasso philosophy of managing and he knows that this will help bring the team together with them all together and then be like, hey, look, we did it. We actually did it. Danny's fine because of you guys, because you came together and you did this. This is all Higgins' idea. So putting the team first, as Rebecca said, I am going to have to give it to Higgins. There's a there's a different show in another multiverse, Logan, where Higgins is just the stooge to Rebecca and does everything she wants. But I like that they have gone where he has agency. He does what he wants and he does what he thinks is best. And I I do like that this show gives Higgins. He's not just the right hand man. He does what Rebecca asks a lot of the times, but if he thinks this is going to help, he's kind of in a rock and a hard place of his job as director of football. He's going to help the team because his job is on the line. But he also knows that's not what the owner wants, right? So he's in this rock and a hard place, but I, I do like that he's not just a, I'm going to do whatever she tells me all the time. All right. I, I'm going with a, with a curveball here um, mm. because she is now currently staff. I'm going Keely on this episode. And, I, and I'll tell you why. And within a week of her really working uh, as uh, somebody with the club, like, you know, last episode we mm-hmm. get introduced to her her role and what she does with the team. She's what's probably settling into her first week here. And now, you know, a week's gone by. She's basically told Rebecca to F off. She's gotten things out of Roy that we have not seen yet. We get a more personal side and we're going to get more from that interaction. Um, Keely's kind of digging and getting these players bios. So I think that's where a lot of this episode stems from is people looking and reflecting on who they are and what makes them them. And the, the last thing I want to mention is when she does meet up with Jamie and the fact that that's my favorite, that's been one of my favorite lines. And I'm like, that's such a cool thing to kind of like, you know what, Jamie, you, you need to stop. You know, I know that you're battling and that's oftentimes what people do. I know you're battling, but you need to stop fighting the people that are trying to help you. I think we're all guilty of that at some point. Right. Um, we, we get, we get so wound up in our emotions. And I think that's the same thing with Rebecca. I think it's the same thing with Ted. Um, I think it's the same thing with Beard, Roy, like just name anybody that they all have these internal battles that they're having with people and you need to stop fighting the people that are trying to help you. Um, and there's big moments coming up with a lot of these characters where they're having that moment of Keely needs, you know, that little Keely voice saying, stop battling the people that you're trying that people are trying to help. Perfectly said. 
So employee of the week, Keeley for Logan, Higgins for me. I think I've given it to Higgins every time except one. <laughs> yeah. one at this point. I think you gave it to Ted, right? Ted he won to only, Ted like right? last episode or yeah, something. Because he was so good because of the horse and stuff. But yeah, I, mean, I have it. I have them all written down. I've yeah. I've kept track of them here, but uh, yeah, I think I've been giving it to. Uh, oh, you know, I've given it to Ted two times. Yeah, Ted twice, but yeah. I think the other four times have been Higgins. Or I think it'll vary, like, just depending on the times of the season. But next episode, Jordan, is one of my favorite episodes. To be honest with you. I don't know why I like this episode so much, but I think it's because there's two characters that really just flourish in this next next episode. So. Yes, next episode we'll be talking about Make Rebecca Great Again. It is uh, an episode that aired September 11th of 2020, so we'll be wow. jumping on to talk about that one. Uh, you know, when, we, when I did my podcast for Superstore, um, The Break Room with my friends Casey and Aylan and DJ, we had something similar to this where we did a golden vest of the week yeah. where we'd give out, you know, the best. And sometimes, and this is where it'll change for me every so often. Sometimes I'm giving it almost as if universe, like in universe, like, Oh, Sam played a great game. He also carried a good part of the episode. So I'm giving you man of the match, but sometimes it's going to be this, like it was on that show where I'd be like, Oh, this person had like the best line of the episode. I'm giving it to them. And sometimes it's just actual reasoning. Like this one, I actually right. have reasoning to give it to Higgins. Sometimes it's just like, I think two episodes ago, it was just he said something really funny that I was like, all right, Higgins is my employee of the week. So really there's no standard there for people that are listening. <laughs> it's just going to be however I feel uh, for that stuff. But yeah, I've done something similar. And sometimes it'd be like, oh, that person carried the whole episode. And then sometimes it's like, Oh, that person was just funny in that one scene, you know. Uh, so, I think the good thing is we give our explanation after as to why, and it it will it'll justify our yeah our belief. Yeah. So. But yeah, that about wraps us up. If you want to give us any sort of feedback, you want to give us your employee of the week or your man of the match, or questions about just overall how we feel about a certain topic on the show, anything like that, reach out to us. We you know, we'll read these, obviously. Email, email us, Ted Last Come. Twitter at Believe underscore cast. Or you can just message us on our Stateside Soccer Show. That is Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or email. Stateside Show is the handle for all of those. Thank you all for watching or listening. We'll catch you next time where we talk Make Rebecca Great Again. Murga.